Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell the truth about silver. Today is Tuesday the 26th of July 2022 and tomorrow is a very important day for gold and silver prices. Why? Because the Fed FOMC will be making its announcement on interest rates. What is that announcement likely to be? Let's take a look. Well, tomorrow is the day. Tomorrow is the day when the FOMC of the United States will announce what it is going to do with regards to interest rates. And we'll take a look at how this is affecting markets currently in advance of that announcement. Now, an article published, as you can see in the top left-hand corner only 35 minutes ago, by Reuters, says Fed Chair Powell is not done telling markets where rates will go. We'll read a little bit of this, but then we'll talk more generally about what the market is doing. Since it began its current round of interest rate hikes this year, the US Federal Reserve has aimed to let investors know ahead of time, not just where rates are heading generally, but exactly how big a move to expect each time. And despite some snags, including what analysts say was a last minute, but successfully telegraphed change of plans before the June meeting, Fed Chair Jerome Powell isn't likely to abandon those efforts. The Fed and other central banks have long used that signalling, known as forward guidance in their parlance, to set expectations about where policy is headed to help create the financial conditions conducive to their goal. Coming out of the 2007 and 9 crisis, financial crisis, for instance, the Fed set very long-term guidance that ensured rates would not rise for years. The past year's run-in, with the highest inflation in a generation, has forced changes to that, in particular, shortening the horizon over which they can pledge certain actions. Quote, it's a very difficult environment to try to give forward guidance 60, 90 days in advance, unquote, Powell said at a press conference after May's meeting. There are just so many things that can happen in the economy and around the world. So, you know, we're leaving ourselves room to look at the data and make a decision as we get there. Indeed, other central banks are encountering similar challenges and are responding in new ways. The European Central Bank last week raised rates more than it had promised at its prior meeting and did not provide guidance for the size of next month's increase. And of course, we raised that in our weekly update published on the weekend. And we've put a link to that below if you haven't seen it. The Bank of England delivered a surprise full percentage point interest rate increase earlier this month without breathing a word in advance. But as the head of the world's most important central bank now undertaking its sharpest bout of policy tightening in decades, Powell has a particular stake in making sure markets do not under or overestimate what is coming, analysts say. On Tuesday, U.S. central bankers start a two-day meeting at which they are expected to ratify a three-quarter percent point increase. The bigger of two possible increments that Powell weeks ago said would be under consideration. And despite uncertainty over what data on inflation and employment in the next two months will show, analysts broadly expect Powell to put some parameters around September's rate hike decision as well. And of course, as we mentioned in our update, after this meeting, there isn't another one until September. So you have this two month gap. Monetary policy works through market expectations. And if they go haywire, you end up tightening more than you want, said Piper Sandler economist Roberto Perley. I think it's a tough game to play, but I think it's reasonable for them to play. Former Fed governor and now Fed watcher Larry Myers says that on Wednesday, Powell may avoid a specific promise on the size of the next hike, but may take any opportunity to leave the impression it will be 50 or 75 basis points and not to give markets an incentive to build in 100. That's a full 1% increase. He'll also be looking for Powell to lay the groundwork for an eventual pause in rate hikes by discussing what inflation thresholds could trigger a slower pace of tightening. Now, I won't read the rest of the article because it's mainly talking historically, but 
I will read just up this paragraph. This week's rate hike will lift the Fed's policy rate to what policymakers say is a neutral level. And further increases in borrowing costs are expected to bite into economic growth and eventually inflation as well. Markets may react by immediately pricing in rate cuts, Dai said, easing financial conditions and nudging up demand before the Fed may feel inflation is heading convincingly down. The idea they will pivot to a measured pace of rate hikes is going to be confused with a pivot toward cutting. That's the communication challenge, Dai says. Now, clearly, the bank, central bank, in fact, central banks around the world know full well they can only raise rates by so much before it severely disadvantages economic growth. And the one thing they cannot afford is for economic growth to turn into decline, especially having just come out of a pandemic. So we will expect an interest rate rise. They will then have two months to assess its effect on inflation. If inflation is still stubbornly high, we envisage another half to three quarters of a percent rise again in September, after which we should then start to see a decline in inflation. Interestingly, though, we have to also bear in mind that in the United States, and we cannot ignore this totally, though central banks claim they do not take account of the political process, you, you have congressional and senate elections and of course there'll be enormous pressure on the fed to limit any increase in interest rates so close to an election bearing in mind it's almost guaranteed that tomorrow we'll have a three quarter of a percent rise what is happening generally to stocks and to gold and silver prices well yesterday we can see the Dow Jones was up 0.28%, S&P up 0.13, but the NASDAQ was down 0.43. Now this morning, now the time currently is very close to midday, it's 11.49 GMT, and we can see the Eurostox index is down half a percentage point, the FTSE index is up half a percentage point, the DAX index is down three quarters of a percentage point and the CAC is down nearly half a percentage point. So no major movements, in fact, on those markets currently. If we look at the dollar index, that's currently higher. It's gone back above 106 and is now 107.05. And we can certainly see it perhaps strengthening even further prior to the interest rate decision you tomorrow. If you hear a buzzing in the background, that is unfortunately a battery that I'm running this off because we've got a slight power issue at home. So I apologize if there's a fan noise in the background. Crude oil prices are up a dollar and WTI crude is up a dollar forty at 106 and 98 dollars respectively. Cryptocurrency markets are down nearly 5% over the last 24 hours and Bitcoin is hovering around the $21,000 mark. So what's happened to gold? Well, we can see that gold is down $10 over this last 24 hours. It's currently standing at 1718 and if I have a look, in fact it's just yeah, 1718. It started the week at 1728. So it's actually down 10 dollars on Friday's close. Silver, let me refresh the page, is currently down 14 cents over the last 24 hours at 18.51. If I have a look, it closed on Friday at 18.64, so it's down 13 cents. We did say in our weekly update we expect gold and silver initially to potentially rise. Well, it actually dipped momentarily and then rose, but then dipped again. Um, but we still think it's going to be under pressure prior to Wednesday. And then depending on what comes out on Wednesday, and it won't just be the interest rate decision, but it'll be the comments thereafter that will fundamentally move markets. So perhaps 
if there is going to be a change, it's going to be mainly on Thursday when the markets have had time to absorb all of the information that they've been given. Economic data out today, Consumer Confidence Index. That's going to be interesting. But tomorrow we have durable goods orders, pending home sales, advanced report on trading goods, but the most important is the FOMC announcement. That's it for now. We'll keep you abreast of things as and when they occur. Thank you for listening. Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, press the bell sign. We'll catch up with you soon. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Thank you.